Well, if you'll look around, we have a lot of people missing. And I got a little secret for you. You need to let them know tonight they missed something. The preacher only has two points. They missed a Sunday night that it's going to be short. I hope the ham won't even have time to get cold. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you are amazing. And Father, may you be satisfied with us. In those areas of our life, Father, that you're not satisfied, Father, I pray that you'll convict us and that we'll change those areas. Because, Father, with you, we are satisfied. With you, Father, we're complete. And I just pray, Father, you'll speak to us as we look at your word tonight. No one see or hear me, but they see and hear you, Father. Father, be glorified tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. In John chapter 8, the title of this is Freedom. And in John chapter 8, uh, y'all know we're working through the uh, Bible study Master Life, and then we're working through the book of John. And this week uh, was a crazy week, and trying to get things pre prepared for Sunday, uh, somewhere or another the Lord just let it all happen. And both messages were laid out, and I had prepared them. And then this afternoon I got to my office and I was looking back over this message and all of a sudden I realized this message and this morning's message are going to go hand in hand. And I was like, how did that happen? How did I not realize that th these messages are so similar? And I said, okay, Lord, you kept that blinded from my eyes and from my heart. And I said, someone's here. So if you're sitting there and you're saying, Wes, you're preaching the same message you did this morning, okay. And there's someone here that needs to hear this. It may be me. But I pray that you will be praying for the people that are here tonight that will be sensitive to what this message is about. In John chapter 8, verse 31, where I'm going to start. The title of this, like I said, is Freedom. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in me, in my word, and you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offsprings of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly. I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Now, how do we know we are really free? How can we know that? Well, look at verse 31. It talks about if we abide in his word, you are truly his disciples. You say, well, how can that happen? Well, first way it happens is you've got to open up your Bible. You've got to read it. You've got to study it. You've got to understand what the word of God tells us to do and not do. And when our heart and our spirit and our life starts lining up with the Word of God, it reflects the character of Christ. It reflects the Word of God, and it truly shows that we are His disciples. Look on in verse 32. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Meaning, when you study the Word of God and you allow it to come into your life and, and to work itself out all around you, you will start becoming free. And as you're becoming free, why? How? Because you're being obedient to the Scripture. And that is how you're going to become free. Come on down to verse 34. It's telling the ones, it's like, now, you say, well, I'm not a slave to nobody. Well, is sin in your life? 
Is sin a part of your life every day? Then you're a slave to it. Verse, and then at the verse 35 it says, And a slave doesn't remain in the house forever. And then the last part of verse 35 says, The son remains forever. Meaning, if that sin and all that stuff's going to remain there, then it's going to be departed. But that which has put its faith, its trust, and its direction in the Lord and the, the Lord in, in Christ, that is what's going to last forever in that direction. It comes on down into verse 36, and it says, And if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You see, not works, not actions, but the Jesus himself is what sets us free. Now, as I shared with you, there are two points. Point number one, knowing Jesus is knowing real freedom. Knowing Jesus is knowing real freedom. Jesus himself is the truth that sets us free. We read that in verse 36. He is the source of truth, the perfect standard for what is right. Jesus has set that standard for what is right. He is the truth. He frees us from from the sin and from uh, deception and from the deception of Satan. Many times, sin when we first glance at it, we're like, that's not so bad, or that's not sin, until we wind up in it, and we realize this is contrary to God. Satan sometimes, he decorates it, makes it look a certain way, or put a twist on it, just like he did Adam and Eve. He told them, surely you won't die. Now they didn't have a physical death when they ate of the fruit, But they had a spiritual death. They had a death of separation from God. Because Satan deceived them. But you see, when Christ has set us free from that sin, he has separated us from it, it cannot deceive us any longer. He shows us clearly the ways to eternity. And that's through him, him alone. Jesus does not give us freedom to do what we want. But listen to this but freedom to follow God. You see, we're not set free from that sin to go and just do what we want to do. But we're set free from that sin, that that sin cannot enchain us, cannot lock us down to keep us from going and being obedient to Christ. Because when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus and ask forgiveness of that sin as far as east is from the west, You have been free, and you are free indeed. As we seek to serve God, Jesus' perfect truth frees us to be able to be all that God wants us to be. To be able to be what God wants us to be. Are you free? Are you free? Second point. Knowing Jesus is freedom from the power of sin. Sin has a way of enslaving us, controlling us, and directing our actions. Think about that. Sin has a way of coming into our life and controlling us and making us behave, making us act, making us say, making us do things that is contrary to the Word of God. And you say, how is that? Because we allow the sin to have control. Instead of us saying no to the sin, we wind up saying yes to sin. You have a choice to say yes to the sin, or you have a choice to say Yes to Lord. And say, Jesus, I give you this sin. I ask you to set me free from this sin. I ask you to no longer allow that to control me. And and when you give it all over to him, he takes that sin away from us. Now I want you to check this out. 
I say he takes it away from us. Can you still see it? Can you still know it's there? Uh Uh-huh. But he gives you the power and the strength to say, no. What are you addicted to? What is your habit that you know that should not be a part of your life? That is contrary to the word of God. Let's say it's a cigarette. And you're addicted to it. Does that make them no longer sell a packs of cigarettes at the store? Nope. Say you choose to quit smoking, but you still got a half a pack of cigarettes sitting on your counter. Does it make that pack of cigarettes disappear off your counter? Nope. So you have a choice to say no to that pack of cigarettes and take it and chunk it in the garbage that it will be out of your sight. But it still could be in your mind. You still have a choice. You have a choice to say, Christ, I need your power, I need your strength to keep that from my life, that the life I live, the things I put in my body, the things I do is honorable and glorifying to the Lord. I will no longer allow this addiction or these habits or these problems to control me any longer. Do you struggle with gossip? Do you struggle with... with Forgiveness. You see, sin can bound us up and wrap us up in so many different forms and fashions. We can say, we're not as bad as so-and-so over there. And try to find our freedom by putting our sins on a scale with someone else. But guess what? That is how Satan deceives us. He deceives us in a way that we think we're free But that sin is still there in our lives. It's still controlling us. It's still running us. To be free from that, to be free from that, is to give it up and to walk away from it. And when it starts coming back into your mind, starts coming back into your heart, starts to come back a part of you, you have to get down on your knees and ask the Lord for help. Because there is some of these things that have a grasp upon us so hard. It is so hard to let it go and walk away. And that's what Satan wants. He wants it to be hard for us to walk away that we'll give up. Jesus can free you from this slavery that keeps you from becoming the person God created you to be. God created you to be the man or the woman that he desires for you to be, but are you being that? Are you allowing that sin to enslave you so much that it still has control of your life that you haven't given it all over to him? You can't be the man or the woman that God desires for you to be if that sin has you enslaved. You just can't. If sin is restraining, mastering, or enslaving you, Jesus can break the power it has in your life. He can. He really can. But Jesus isn't going to go over there and take and break those chains unless you call upon his name. You're going to have to say, Lord... This is my struggle. This is where I'm at. This is what is controlling my life. It can be habits. It can be something up in your head. It can be something in your heart you're struggling with. Just something that you know that is not of God. And you can say, Lord, this is it. And say, Lord, here it is. Here it is. And the Lord's going to say, do you really want to give that up? As much as it means to you, are you really willing to give it up? And if you say, yes, Lord, here. He's going to take it from your hand and say, I got it. Now he's going to say, are you going to trust me 
And are you going to follow me? Are you going to fall in love with me so much and pursue me with everything that you have, you will walk away from that temptation. You will walk away from that desire. Or are you going to just take a few steps and go back to it? Or are you going to say, yes, Lord, and keep your head down and follow him wherever he leads? You see, the people that are able to say, here, Lord, take it, and follow the Lord with all they have, those are the ones that at the end he's going to look at them and say, good job. Those that, that kept taking it back, he's going to say, you could have had a life so easy if you'd have just truly gave it up. I'm not talking about salvation. Salvation comes through Jesus alone and putting your faith and your trust in Christ. I don't want no one misunderstanding what I'm saying here. To get saved, you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to save you, and he will. But to obey him and to follow him and to be the disciple. Because you remember when we started reading that passage? It said, if people are going to know that you're my disciple, they're going to see how you obey my word. Do you want people around you to know that you are one of his disciples? Well, by the things you say and by the things you do, they're going to know that you're his disciple. They're going to know it. You see, you have choices in what you do. But when you look at that verse 31, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Meaning, if you give it all over to me, and no matter how hard it's going to be, if you will continue to follow me, You're truly going to be one of my disciples. You're going to be one of those that I can use to glorify you. Just like he used Daniel that we have studied for nearly two months now. Daniel was a person that Jesus could always, that that the Lord could always count on. No matter how many lines were in the den. No matter if he was going to be thrown in the fiery furnace. Didn't matter what happened with him and his friends. He knew that he could always count on them. Does he know he can count on you? Does he know it? Does he say, there's that man, there's that woman. I need someone to stand up for me in Oxford, Mississippi this week. Jesus I got somebody. Would you be the one he would say, I got somebody. I got somebody that will stand in that gap and represent me this week. Would you be that person? Would you be that person? And if your answer is yes, hallelujah. If your answer is no, why not? Why would he not say you're that person? What is keeping you from being that person? Only you can answer that. Only you. Let's pray. Father, sin comes in so many different shapes, forms, But Father, I ask you that you would do a work in our church right now. That you would set us free from it. You would no longer allow it to have a stronghold in our lives. That we would truly give it over to you. If it's a habit, if it's our words. Father, whatever we're struggling with, Lord. If it's become a sin in our life, Lord, I pray, Father, it would no longer enslave us, but that we would be free indeed with you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I ask you to stand and for our invitation, but I, you may.
may just want us 